Hey guys, um, in this video I'm going to go through really quickly and show you how to use blend shapes and along the way we're also going to use a lattice to form. So the idea with a blend shape is that we're going to store different versions of our same mesh in different positions and then we'll be able to play them back just by changing a couple of numbers. In this particular one I'm going to use this model here which is a fish model which I created um, previously for you and you can download from the website. Now I encourage you to use your own model for this but when you're using your own model and you're about to animate it um, you probably you can see this is the smoothed version of the model this is the non-smoothed version of the model um, and what we're going to want to do is take our non-smoothed version of the model and we're going to want to smooth, smooth this mesh um, kind of bake in the smoothing so that we can animate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our mesh menu here and we're going to say smooth okay and now when we do that we're going to go into this options menu here and you'll see that we can choose the level of smoothing that we want. Um, if you're using an older computer you may prefer to use Maya Catmull Clark in here instead of open sub, sub div. I'm going to use open sub div, but if you have a problem if your mesh disappears or something, try using a different one. Okay, so I'm going to change these subdivision levels down to two here and hit apply. And what you'll see there is that your mesh has now been smoothed, but this is actually now our mesh. So if I go into vertex select, you can see I've got all these vertices in here. Now I want to make this fish have a swimming motion, swimming from side to side and it would be really, really, really difficult for me to just kind of grab a bunch of these vertices and move them around so that they were kind of like not doing this when I moved them. What I want to do is I want to be able to kind of bend all of these vertices around. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Sometimes it's enough to use the soft select tool. So the soft select tool allows you to basically notice how when I select a vertex here and I move that, it just moves that one vertex. Whereas if I come in here and double click on my select tool, I can come down here to soft selection, turn that on. And what will happen now is that when I select a vertex, you can see that it's got this kind of yellow map around them. If I change this fallout radius here on mine, it's set to five. If I change it down to one, you'll probably see this a little bit more easily. Okay, so what this is doing is it's saying now that the vertices that are sort of highlighted around here in pink and yellow, they're affected by, um, they're all affected by the movement of this one vertex. So if I move back in here into my um, select tool, you can see that as I move this out, it moves out all those vertices, not just that single one. So one way I could edit this would be I could like just modify a couple of vertices in smooth select mode or in, in um, soft select mode. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come back up here into my selection tool, go back into soft selection and turn that off. What I want to do here is I'm going to use a different kind of deformer to deform my fish. So you'll see that there's something, I'm going to go back to object mode, there's something up here under the deform menu called a lattice deformer. These are all different deformers, they're all different ways you can deform a mesh. The one I'm going to use is this one called lattice. So pop that on and you'll see this box goes around your fish. This box has got subdivisions going down this way. I don't want them down this way, I want them to go this way because I want to deform my fish in its swimming motion. So these are called S, T and U divisions. S goes um, this way, T as you can see goes this way and uh, U goes this way. So I can change this. I'm going to change this one back to 2 and S divisions I'm going to bump up to 5 there like this. Okay. So this is my fish with a lattice around it. Now at this point I've done a little bit of work so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go save scene as and I'm just going to call this one fish lattice. Alright, so the reason I'm doing this is last time I made this video, the video, the Maya crashed on me and I lost all my work. So as you're doing this, make sure you save as you go to prevent um, having to go back too far. Okay, so once we've got the lattice on here, we can right click and select lattice point. And you can see now I can select the points in the lattice. And what you'll notice is that if you select a point or more, one or two points in the lattice, and then use your normal um, move keys, you can you could distort your mesh around that, right? We can do all sorts of interesting things. Now what we want to do here, of course, is we want to make our fish swim. So we're going to want to move these ones out and cause our fish to kind of bend. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to go into a top view because this is the view that we want to look at it from. All right, so we're going to go into five mode here. Um, so it's shaded. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these ones here and I'm going to move them up over here. These ones I'm going to move up here. And these I'll move up a bit. And this one I'll move up a bit too. Okay, so I might move these just up a little bit more. I might move this one back a little bit. Look, it doesn't really matter where you get these two. This one I'll just move back in this way a little bit. It's up to you where you move all this to. It's just aesthetic appeal. Okay, so that's where my fish is when its tail's all swung to one side. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. You can see how the um, this this lattice has made us editing the shape of this object much easier. Okay, so when you've got him bending to one side like that, select the uh, mesh and press Control D to duplicate and move the duplicated mesh over there. So what we've done is we've created a duplicate of this mesh, and this mesh is no longer affected by the lattice. This one here still is. So now what we want to do is go back to our top view and we're going to want to reset this so that we're back in our like default like straight position as it was modeled. Now we could come back in here and try and modify the lattice by editing its different points to put it back to that space, but we don't need to. We can go back up to our deform menu here and you'll see there's a lattice submenu. We can go we can go in here and go reset lattice and that will just take it back to its default position. Very very handy. Okay, so the next thing we want is the fish's tail to be swishing to the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to go lattice point, and we're going to do the opposite of what we did before, right? We're going to move this tail all the way down here. This one's going to move out to here. This one's going to move down a little bit here. Uh, this one I might move in just a little bit there. And this one I might move back up just a little bit there. Just a little bit there. Okay, that's good enough. So what I'm going to do, same as before, click on here, Control D to duplicate, and I'm going to move this one down to here. Then I'm going to select this guy again, and I'm going to go back to my uh, deform menu, down to lattice, and I'm going to go reset lattice. Okay, so now I've got three different fish, right? I've got my main one, which is just sitting there normally, and I've got my one with its tail to the left and one with the tail to the right. Before I go any further, I'm going to go File, Save scene as. I'm going to call this one fish lattice three because there's three fish there. Continue. Okay, just in case I get a crash, I can just load this back up again. All right, now what I want to do is I want to apply the blend shapes. Applying blend shapes is really easy. All you need is your main mesh. Okay, and then a version of your mesh, exactly the same mesh distorted in a different way. How you've distorted it doesn't matter. You could use a lattice, you could use a wire, you could use a soft select. Whatever you want to do, all we need is two versions of the same uh, mesh. If we're using a totally different mesh, the blend shape won't work. We can only do it with the same mesh that's been distorted. Now that we've actually applied those distortions, we don't actually need this lattice anymore. So I'm going to delete that lattice. All right, and then what I'm going to do to apply my blend shape, you'll see that the blend shape menu option up is, is up here under, under deform blend shape. The way you get it to work is you click on one fish, the distorted version, then you shift click on the base version. So the base version is the one you want to apply the distortion to. Okay, so what we can do here is we go, right, we've clicked on this one, we've clicked on this one, and then we've clicked on, and we haven't got this one clicked at all. We've got our de default one as green and we go deform blend shape. Now once you do that, if you go up to your Windows menu and into the animation editors, you'll see there's this thing in here called shape editor. Pop that open and you'll see there's this one in here called pcube5. Right, the way this works is pretty cool. When you move this slider here, you will blend your base shape to go towards the other shape that you've attached it to. So you'll notice that when that's at zero, it's in its base position. When it's at one, it's in the deformed position. And when it's at 0.5, it's in between the two. So there's our fish kind of swimming, but only half of it's swimming. All right, so let's create another blend shape. But before we do this, this is the fish's tail moving to the fish's right. So we're going to call this 
tail uh, for tail right. Okay, so uh, let us do the same thing again. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to go this one, and then we're going to select on sorry, select this one, then this one, so that our main one is green. And then we're going to go deform blend shape, and you'll see a new blend shape will appear there. This is going to be tail underscore L. Okay, and you'll see that this one now does this. Now the cool thing here is that these blend shapes combine together. So if we turn this one all the way to one, then you'll notice that when we put tail R over the top of this, this causes tail R to push back over the top of tail left. And so now we've got the full range of motion between those two. So if you've got tail left pushed all the way up, then as we introduce tail R, it combines with tail left. And now we've got the full range of motion of our fish swimming. Okay, so now that we've got those both in there, I'm going to close my shape editor. I'm going to save this once more. I'm going to save scene as, and I'm going to save this one as fish BS for blend shapes. And I'm going to take these two blend shapes now. Now, I don't need these two anymore. Uh, the blend shapes are baked in. So I could delete these meshes, or if I wanted to, I could just pop them onto different layers. I'm just going to delete them for the sake of this. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create an animation with this. So because I want these to go to these to animate as this uh, as my, my thing plays. So let's go into uh, animation. All right, so now I've got my animation set up. And um, what I want to do is go to frame one. And then on frame one, I'm going to bring up my Windows, Animation Editors, Shape Editor again. So I've got my blend shapes up here. And what I want to do with my blend shapes here is I want to be animating this one. Now notice this is a number here, and if I right click on that, I can do a set key here, right? So what I can do is I can get Maya to remember that at frame one, this should be the value, and then at some other frame, it can be some other value. So on frame one, I want this to be zero. We're on frame one. So I'll just come in here, set key. Then I'm going to go up to frame 20, move that up to 1, set key. Then up to frame 40 here, move that back to 0 again, set key again. Okay, so that's pretty much we've set three keyframes in there, which is kind of nice. All right, so uh, let's just close that down and I will save the scene. Bit paranoid here. Okay, so now at this point, this whole thing is going to crash on me, so uh, I'm going to continue that. Let my crash. 